So I'm here in my home office, which coincidentally happens to have a toilet in it. That's where I do some of my best thinking. And thinking about Donald Trump, when he announced his run for the presidency, um, a whole lot of people, myself included, I don't know if it's 10%, 40% of America said, Donald Trump, oh yeah, he's the real estate mogul, mogul with decidedly skepti ethical concerns. He's a reality TV star and that guy is not who we think is fit to hold the highest office in the land. You know, you hear the phrase sometimes, if it looks like a duck and walks like a duck and quacks like a duck, it's probably a duck. Well, we saw a duck. And this duck dressed himself up as a bald eagle and told a lot of people what they wanted to hear about how, you know, here's what's the, wrong with the country and here's who to blame for it, for it and here's what bad is going to happen to you if you don't listen to me and follow me. And enough people bought into that bald eagle persona because he was saying what they wanted to hear. What I think is happening now with the January 6th hearings is enough people are saying, you know what, even if the guy is doing things that I align with politically, philosophically, idealistically, I cannot abide the kind of a person that he is, the way that he abused our system, the lack of respect that he had for things like the Constitution, rule of law, peaceful transfer of power, um, and therefore I cannot support Trump and people who continue to support Trump knowing what he did now that it's becoming more public, I just can't stomach affiliation with them either. So I don't know what they have to call themselves, whether it's no longer Republican or a certain kind of Republican or an independent, um, but I think that's going to be the ultimate end result is enough people, certainly some people are on the Trump train for life. They have embraced that as part of their cultural and political identity, and they cannot let that go because it would be an admission uh, of either bad faith or poor judgment, whatever you want to call it. They're, they're always Trumpers, if you will, but there are enough people on part of the Republican spectrum as well as a lot of the independent spectrum who will come to the conclusion that what people did here was wrong. It's not the kind of a country that I want to live in. I don't want to be part of a system where we're always pointing the finger and blaming other people, often with, with faulty or flawed or at least only partial information. And what I think will actually help us repair is something that's being um, supported by a group called Represent.us or Represent Us. They're in favor of what, what they call a... Um, uh, a ranked choice vote. It's something that certain countries, uh, well countries, but uh, certain states and, and cities and counties across the U.S. have already started adopting, like Maine, for example. And it says that if you want to vote for someone, we'll take your first choice. And if your first choice doesn't end up getting a majority, then we'll look at your second choice instead. So that you can say that I like this person, this person, this person, and I definitely don't like them. Because what we have right now in our highly factionalized two-party two system is the primary system where you get the fringes who can most rile up the base on the left or the right and whose ideas are ultimately not centrist and not most representative of the majority of their constituents. But we keep skewing farther and farther to these polls where if we had a ranked choice system or if we ultimately could support the more centrist candidates, then we wouldn't have the quagmire, the stalemate that we see in Washington, D.C. and elsewhere. And we'd be able to get more done because we'd have people coming from a more centrist stance in representation of the majority of the U.S., the, the largely less vocal majority. Thank you for listening to my rant.